what's going on guys it's your boy since there was a video here today bring us an after effects slash illustrator tutorial here today uh the illustrator part is super quick and simple just kind of show you guys how to make a cool little uh kind of like gem like logo to your solid color logos that you might have out there um yeah it's super clean it's a very clean transition and uh hopefully you guys will like it out here i'll show it right here uh huh See, I think it's pretty freaking clean. Um, of course, it like utilizes the logo flying thing. We did that previously, but I think this time with the little tweaks and kind of things that I've learned throughout the uh, throughout the like months or so, um, it's freaking dope. And I do hope you guys do enjoy it. Um, as always, guys, 275 likes on the video. You can see it down below, which will mostly be like cool little AE file in today's aspect, I guess you'd say. Right now, so yeah, hope you guys do enjoy, and I'll see you guys in a second. All right, guys, so right before we actually hop inside After Effects, I'm currently in Illustrator. And I want to show you guys a really cool trick you can do if your logo happens to be like mine or it's a solid color. Now, if it is, of course, I'm going to have my logo inside Illustrator. I'm going to lock it, actually. And I'm also going to make another new layer right above it. And I'm also going to make sure I have my view on snap to point and not snap to pixel. I think by default, both snap to pixel and snap to point are both on at the same time. So just make sure your snap to point is only on. Now, when you have that now done, you can press P on your keyboard for the shortcut for the pen tool. And what you want to do is on this new layer, basically click on each of the kind of like anchor points that would make a really cool kind of spot to kind of divide in. So I'm going to say the top and bottom of my logo is a really good spot to divide. So I'm going to make sure, of course, what do you, if you want to see, if you actually zoom in really quickly, you see the word anchor right into your actual mouse. That, of course, makes sure that you're clicking on an anchor point which is going to make sure also that you're also kind of selecting the ends of each of the paths where there's no issues at all when you want to cut them out right so i'm gonna do the same thing for each and every single point right boom boom and i'll do the other side as well perfect now that, that is done if you guys also didn't know if you guys click and click the way I make multiple lines is when I make one line to make a division, I hold control, press outside the canvas or on the canvas itself, just not on the line. And then I can just make a nice little reset and it makes you allow, allows me, excuse me, to actually do another line without actually interrupting the other one or having to connect it. So now that that's done, I can actually hide or lock, oh, excuse me, there we go. Unlock my logo, just like so. Press A on my keyboard, which is the direct selection tool. Then I'm gonna hover over everything. Press shift M on my keyboard for the shape builder tool, which is this tool right here. Right, and then I can just kind of say each every single one is now its own individual shape. And now, if for whatever reason one whole kind of piece uh, happens to be like still selected and you don't have that cut there, it just means you missed kind of the edges of the actual path. So make sure you go back and kind of fix that path, right? But I'm gonna just make sure I click on each individual point of my logo, just like so. That makes sure that makes sure, excuse me, that makes a division of each of my little uh, kind of like se uh, selections of my logo. Then what we can do we're gonna select one of them. Then I'm gonna go on my bottom left here and put on gradient. And then we can have a gradient, nice looking good, right? We're gonna press A again for the direct uh, selection tool, right? I'm gonna click on that, press I on my keyboard, which is the eyedropper tool. Then I'm just gonna click on the same exact gradient from the last time we did it, just like so. And now I have this really cool hard edge going on only if the two colors are two opposite colors of me. So I do have, for my actual gradients, I have a nice little blue and then a, a bit of a darker blue. So then of course, make sure your color that you guys end up choosing to have, you have one tone and then one darker tone as well. And now also when you click on it, if you press G on your keyboard, it's the gradient tool. And you'll see, if I just go this way, you'll see that the hard edge is no longer there because the colors are still the same colors on that at the actual point. What you wanna do is you wanna press G, right? And it basically select on one side and go to the other side. And then of course, if it is yet again, like I said before, two same colors on the same actual line, just go ahead and switch on the other side and just go on from the, the opposite side. You guys, you know what I'm saying, right? So I'm gonna do the same exact thing for each, uh, each, uh, each individual one, just like so, boom. Boom, and then there we go. We have our logo with a nice cool little blue kind of like gem-esque feature to it, which just looks really cool. And it'll help us for actual tutorial when we move into After Effects and just have it just be a little bit more kind of unique and fun. And uh, yeah, that's just how you do that. All right, guys, we are finally in After Effects, all good to go and get this thing going. So I do have my logo inside as well as an arrow PNG you're gonna see me use for yeah, and a cool little element in the actual transition. So I'm actually gonna do, I'm gonna give you guys a composition setting. So if I do new composition, this is basically 920 by 1080, frames are at 60 FPS, and of course the durations are currently at two seconds, which is perfectly fine. We want a nice short duration, which is gonna make it really, really easy for us to of course render and all that good stuff, right? So you can press okay for yourselves. I already have this open up, so we're good to go. What I'm gonna do is I'm also gonna drag in my logo PNG, just like so. I'm also gonna make it a nice smaller kind of like canvas. If you guys wanna know how I'm keeping it in the same orientation, I'm holding shift while I'm clicking on this corner here, moving it inward, right? So I'm gonna say right about here's a pretty good size. I want it to be a pretty like fair size. Of course, people wanna see it when it kind of pops up and like swirls up. 
right? So I'm gonna say this is good right here. Now, at any point in this tutorial, you need to see if things are transparent or just wanna see what it looks like on a transparent background. Um, right now, I am in a transparent background. There's no solid behind this, even though it is black. You guys see right here, since I turn on transparency grid, which is kind of shows you whether or not it's transparent or not. I just wanna show you guys for the tutorial for the sake of your eyes, just having it be a black background for you guys right here, right now. So. You can still also see here the frames uh, per second here. Basically, of course, 60 FPS would be that one second mark. Of course, so we of course made it one second or 60 FPS, right? And then of course, over here is going on to the two second mark. So we're gonna basically kind of saying ourselves at around one second, we want our animation to be completely finished when like all the stuff is there. And then at the end of the last kind of second here, we want everything to be gone and uh, kind of see where we got to cut it off. So, so we make the actual transition itself um, easy and non laggy. So people can just do it on and off and on and off and on and off kind of thing, right? So. Okay, to get this thing going, we're actually gonna click on our logo itself, uh, and we're gonna press P on our keyboard, which brings up the position. Okay, now just so you guys know, for whatever reason you moved your logo, it's not in the center, you don't know how to center it without eyeballing it, right click on the actual logo itself, go to transform, and then center to view, that'll make sure it's perfectly in the middle. Okay, now with the position keyframe now up, when we press P on our keyboard, we're gonna go up to where it says about five frames here, and just simply click on this little stopwatch down here, and just say, okay, that is our first keyframe, and then we're gonna go to where it says one second over here and put another keyframe just like so, okay? So <clears throat> you definitely wanna make sure the actual keyframe is here at the one second mark because it wants to be at this posi position right here at that one, uh, one second mark. So what I'm gonna do is I'll go back to the five second uh, or the five millisecond mark here and then take my position, just simply just use the V or my keyboard for the shortcut for the selection tool and just take this actual logo, hold shift after you click. So you click, hold shift, and then just drag this down just like so holding shift will just make sure you keep it on a straight line just so you guys know right i'm also giving it a little more space for whatever reason just like outside like an inch or so outside of the actual outside canvas you guys get what i'm saying right a little extra space here so you'll see if i just kind of play this out you have a very simple animation where it's just simply moving very statically um from of course point a to point b now to get rid of that kind of static motion if i just play it one more time right it's not rendering this is just how it is and we want to make it look a little more smooth so the way we're going to do that it's going to highlight these two keyframes by just clicking on the actual timeline itself, highlight them, click, and then drag, highlighting both of them. Then I want to right click on one of them, just like so. Then go to keyframe assistance, and then go to easy ease, and you'll see now your uh, keyframes turn into little hourglasses. Then what I want to do is want to go to this graph editor right here, just like so, and you'll see this little graph right here. Yours might look like something like this. Um, what you want to do is to turn that off or make it look like mine. Use edit speed graph, okay? Now what you want to do here is you want to basically click on the graph, you'll see this one point here, another point here, basically select and highlight both of those points. And you also see this little yellow kind of extension come out of the actual anchor points, okay? So what happens here is what do you, if you move this one up just like so, what this is basically saying is you want it to be slow, 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 and then when it gets like towards the end, it'll be a lot more faster, and it'll drop off and be a lot more faster as well. Now, that's basically how that's going. If I wanna move this one inside over here, It'll basically be really fast at the beginning and then slower towards the end. That's basically what we're doing here. We're just gonna take this one over here and move this. I want it to be kind of slow in the beginning and then faster at the end. I'm also gonna make this one a little bit towards this right here and we should be good to go. If I click out of it really quickly, redo it, replay it, you'll see it's gonna be a lot more smoother, right? What I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm actually gonna push this one in a little bit more. Also push this one in a little bit more. It should be a little more smoother. Heck yeah. So you can see it's now a lot more kind of like just very, very smooth in an aspect and we're good to go with, the, with that right there. So at any point you want to switch anything out, I'm not going to really picky, be picky about mine right now, but just be picky as much as you want to. And then this graph editor is going to be your like your best friend and all these little keyframes are going to be your best friends. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and also throw in an axis rotation here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this little, uh, uh, little kind of like square or cube right here. I'm also going to click that. What happens is it'll actually add me a, uh, add me, an, <laughs> add me, you guys know what I'm saying, right? It'll give me the X rotation as well as the Y rotation. What we really want right now is the Y rotation, which is going to rotate it in a nice kind of Y axis, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to one second really quickly. Also keyframe that immediately. Then I'm going to go to uh, this uh, five seconds or five milliseconds over here, by the way, or five frames. I'm also going to keyframe this immediately as well. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the actual one second frame. So we have a at the five uh, frames here, we're going to have it basically be at zero, zero for these two things. And as well as if we go to one second, we want to basically have this be one full rotation. So besides actually going over here, if you guys want to see, so I kind of rotate it right here. Now, of course, if you made this 360 degrees, that'll give you a full rotation. Obviously, if I kind of click 
and I hover right through, you'll see it kind of rotates at a full 360 degrees, right? I'm just gonna say, you don't have to actually do that. All you have to do is bring this back to zero. This little uh, zero X, then the actual uh, 0, 0.0, what this is basically in the front is basically saying how many rotations you guys want in the beginning. So if I just click on this and actually just make this one, that'll give us one full rotation without actually having to put 360. This little kind of thing you wanna do if you wanna just make it look a little bit more, or just make your actual numbers just be more simple, right? So you're gonna see if I click, press OK to continue it. You'll see it has a nice little now rotation. It looks very, very freaking smooth, and I'm happy about that. Now, of course, if you want to as well, you can have this be easy ease as well. So I'm just gonna easy ease this. Let's just say I want it nice and slow in the beginning a little bit as well. Then I'm drop it off a little faster. So I'll just see what that looks like. Right? Super nice. It almost kind of you kind of almost miss what's happening. So what I might say here is maybe X the uh, kind of how fast this is going here. It's kind of be a little bit more kind of like this. Right? Let's just say, there we go. I definitely want to see more of the spin, and I think that looks really, really good now. So we're kind of good on that aspect right there. So now that I have this all good to go, I would basically say we're actually going to move into where the little arrows kind of come into play. So for the actual arrows, okay, I'm actually going to take this and make this the actual transparency background now, really quickly. Right? I'm going to take the arrow PNG, throw this in some actual composition. Now, this arrow PNG, I'll give you guys this as well. It's kind of, it's basically just literally an arrow PNG, okay? Also, for some reason, I made it so that's the scale size of a 1920 by 1080p, whatever. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to take this, make it a little bit more smaller. We're going to have this little arrow do something like this, okay? So, if you ever can't find your keyframes again, all you have to do is press U on your keyboard, just like this, to bring up your keyframes once again. So, I'm going to go to my arrow, press U on my keyboard. There's nothing on the arrows, of course, not right now, but I'm also going to press P on my keyboard for the actual arrow position, just like so. So at one second, we want the position to be right around here. Then also right around here, we want this just to be outside the frame. Just like this, we want the position to be outside the frame. And if you keyframe it at the end right here, it'll also, also automatically make a keyframe for you guys if you guys, of course, move the actual position at a different point. So I'm gonna see what happens if I just kind of scroll this through. This kind of comes in, the arrow comes in, that's perfect, it's kind of, it's basically exactly what we want. So you can see here, arrow kind of comes in, but of course the arrow is stagnant, so once again, we're gonna add a nice little easy ease to it. Just like this. Okay, now let's see what it looks like right now. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. I'm a, I'm a fan of that. So what I'm gonna do now, at this point, is I wanna have this be kind of like uh, going through being a full solid opacity to a lower opacity. So what I'm gonna do here, is if I press T on my keyboard, that brings up the opacity kind of keyframe, and I can just say to myself at uh, one frame per second, I want this to be at zero. And then back where the other one keyframes are, right here, make sure this is back at 100. So 100 keyframe here, then I'll go all the way over here and make sure this is at zero over here. I'm also not pressing the keyframe, that's why it's not adding it. There we go. 100 here and then zero here, just like so. So what's going to happen here is going to go up. You can't really see it too much. What happens is I'm going to actually move this a little further up the actual timeline because I want it to be 100 opacity for as long as possible. Like right here, I want it to still be 100 opacity. There we go, that's pretty good right there. So I kind of have it around the 45 frame mark, not exactly, but just so you guys know for reference, that's where the arrow opacity is kind of being at. That's perfect. So, now that I have this, I actually want to press C on my keyboard, or Control C on my keyboard, Control C, Control V to actually copy and paste an arrow here. So what's gonna happen here is one on the bottom right now, I'm actually gonna move the keyframe where the position is. So the position keyframe right here, if I just follow this all the way here, I want this to be a little further up, right? That's gonna be basically kind of saying I want it to be a little bit later than the original keyframe right here. So I'm gonna actually show all you guys the keyframes. There you go. So this is the keyframe of the first arrow for the position right here. This is the keyframe for the second arrow copy right here. So it's a little bit behind, or I guess you would say in front of the actual timeline, which means it's basically behind the timeline, right? So if I kind of say over here, right, you'll see, kind of does a nice little arrow kind of bloop, 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 kind of like a cool little, just kind of like a directional kind of symbol, right? Or, or, or way, right? I'm going to add one more actually duplicate, control C, control V, make sure I have this, move this a little bit forward again, and you'll see we should have three arrows now coming in. Let's see. Boom, three arrows. Three might be excessive, two might be perfect, but I think three for me is pretty freaking good. And it's a little bit way further ahead than like normal for this one right here. If I just show you guys this keyframe, I'm gonna move it a little bit closer. And I'm gonna say this is pretty good for our first kind of section where the logo's coming in, the arrow's coming in, and everything's looking freaking fire, and we're good to go. So, 
to finalize this little piece here we're actually going to move uh right at the one second keyframe we're, we're really focusing right now on the actual logo right we're focusing on logo so i'm going to move this up for a second to about like uh one second and like uh three milliseconds okay then i'm gonna take my position keyframe that just like so to actually make sure it stays at that keyframe perfectly fine if you don't add this keyframe right here it'll basically start the animation like right as you guys kind of have it here but i want to pause for a quick little second and then do the animation and kind of finish it off so that is why i'm adding another keyframe at the same position just so you guys know okay then i want this to be basically pretty much done at around th uh, one second and 35 milliseconds right so one second and 35 more frames okay so for this position i want this to be basically off the canvas right so i'm gonna click hold shift bring this outside of the canvas and you'll see it just kind of fly up but i want this to be fairly quick when it flies up so i'm gonna of course highlight these again go back to my graph editor and i'm gonna click over here it makes this a little bit more kind of like faster like so we'll see what that looks like actually boom it's like okay it comes in when it comes in it flies out it's like boom boom yep I think that's pretty good i think it could be a little bit more faster but like i said i'm not gonna be too picky about it but i say that's pretty good and uh once we have this now done we'll actually focus on actually finishing it off with the actual thing that's gonna wipe okay so what we're gonna do is be we're gonna be basically using a uh complete solid so i'm gonna right click new solid now with this solid color here you can basically use i'm gonna be using black and then another color if you guys want to you just check this little eye uh, eyedropper just kind of click whatever color that's on the canvas maybe but i want to use black for this first one actually so i'm gonna make sure it's black press okay <laughs> now with this solid here i'll make sure i drag it below everything I'm also going to make sure I click on this middle frame here and also bring this up just a little bit because I want it to be a little more bigger than normal because I want it to also give us a, about a, a few frames when you drag it in and out of the actual uh, uh, canvas or the actual viewpoint and give us a few frames to make sure we have enough time to, of course, switch the transition, right? So for this solid here, I'm going to press P my keyboard for the uh, position. I'm going to say right around here, I want the position or we're kind of gonna, just going to guess for a second. So while this logo is currently going up, right, I want to take this position of this black and make sure I keyframe it. And then just bring it down outside the canvas currently and then i'm gonna go to where it says around the 35 frame mark here and bring this pretty much a little bit further all excuse me all the way up here we go all the way up right so you'll see currently we just have a logo going up and as well as the black now following right it looks pretty good okay i'm a fan uh, right. Okay. So I'm going to also add a, add a little bit of an easy ease to this as well. Basically we're going to add easy ease to literally everything. That's kind of like illustrators thing and everybody's thing when it comes to illustrators, adding easy ease to pretty much everything. Um, here we go. Let's see what it looks like. Nice. It's a little more smoother and kind of like very quick with it now. Right. I like how that looks. Boom. Comes in. Now you have the goes out and the black kind of follows and we're going to go. Okay. So now that I actually finished this off, you can see kind of where the logo is. If you of course want the actual black to come in maybe a little bit more sooner or whatever you may want to move the both the keyframes at the same time together a little bit towards the left which is going to be quicker right so we'll see it's like boom boom yeah that looks pretty good right about there it looks pretty good so what i'm going to do now is i'm actually going to uh press ctrl c ctrl v to make a duplicate of this and i'm also going to make the secondary color which is going to be the actual blue so to actually get another color when the solid is already done you want to go to where it says your effects and presets type in the word fill you want to use the word generate the fill right here you want to take this drag it right below that duplicate and you can go over here the color picker click on that blue you'll see it changes right here right so i'm gonna press you my keyboard to look at the keyframes take this i want to be a little bit later on right we're going to move it towards the front of this or excuse me towards the back of the timeline which means it's going to be a little bit later or delayed right so if you see if i scroll through you'll see the black we also see the blue a little bit delayed right around there just kind of like tailing it just so it kind of adds a little more color in the transition and if i just kind of play this out really quickly yeah i mean i think it looks pretty freaking fire right very clean very simple i like how that looks if you want to add even more color like you want to add like black gray and blue you can just make another duplicate and put it between and just make the keyframe like right in between these two right but i also want to show you guys a little something that you can make it look really really cool as well and that's adding a motion blur so i'm gonna take this right here you see this little kind of like <clears throat> motion blur kind of like dot 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 kind of thing click on this hold on to it and just drag it on all of them you want to basically put it on all of them and then also make sure you actually click it on the actual composition itself if you don't click right here just like so to activate motion blur you will not actually see it also, if you right click composition settings, you see advanced, make sure your shutter angle is basically 180 by default right now. It should be on 180 by default. If it's not, change it to 180 
and I press OK. Now to render it out, what you guys should notice is a bit of a blur going on here. Right, comes in a little bit blurry now, and it just makes the transition look way, way smoother and uh, just adds like a nice cool little touch to it, right? There we go. Boom. You got yourselves a very freaking clean, smooth transition that looks pretty freaking fire in my opinion. And uh, yeah, I'm proud of this. I think it looks super, super sick. And uh, yeah, I'm chilling with it. So if you guys, of course, enjoyed today's tutorial, please leave a like on the video. As always, two to certified likes on the video. You can see it down below. It most, most likely be the actual, uh, what do you call it, this? The project file for this here. Just kind of like match the keyframes and see them. Um, even though you might actually not be able to see because of the PNGs, but just so you guys can see the actual uh, uh, project itself, right? But regardless, I love you guys so very much, and I hope you guys do enjoy today's video here today. Um, enjoy these transitions. Um, transitions make your stream look a little more cooler. Uh, it's one of my favorite things to do when it comes to the actual clients. Everyone always loves the transition because it's always something you see very often. And the cooler it looks, the cooler you might just, you know, see it all. So, right? Oh, see it all. Excuse me. So, what I'm going to do is to quickly render this out is press Control M on your keyboard, right? Or just go to Composition, Add to Render Queue, right? And just go to your loss list here. Take this. I would rather put this format on QuickTime and make sure your channels are on RGB plus alpha, by the way. Make sure you also turn off audio, unless you have audio, but make sure you just turn off audio if you guys do not have it. So, it just makes it easier for OBS to understand it. Press OK. Put your output to where it needs to be put. And then you're good to go now just so you guys also know really quickly let me show you guys okay i'm currently recording so let's hope this doesn't mess it up but if i go to stinger here on my tree uh street scene transitions stinger right press okay what doesn't really matter whatever you basically choose your video file and make sure your time is put on frame and you guys will notice when you guys scroll through here the composition right you'll see if i scroll through here right about here is where it's full black which is means this is where the frame should kind of like switch in between so if you guys see it's 60 then it's like about 20 right so it should be right here about like maybe 18 so that'll basically be uh, 78 frames so if you guys go back over here to obs right you just take this on frame make sure it's on frame uh and if that doesn't work by the way just leave it on milliseconds but i believe it should be on frame and you take you this and you just change this to 78 and then when it, uh, excuse me, when you actually press play or switch your scenes, it'll switch in between that 78 frames, which is going to make it basically just you guys get it right. It'll switch right between this uh, frame and it'll be pure black. So no one will notice that it's switching frames. It'll look freaking sick and nice and clean and smooth. But that is basically it. Now I'll go because I almost forgot. But now I'll go. Love you guys. Talk to you guys later. So that's HQ out. Do not get to keep smiling. Stay positive and stay freaking productive, guys. Later. Much love.